and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Vladimir Brom, an old favorite. We got a donation deck to play some more Vladimir Brom and see how this is going in the current metagame. Um, not too much new with the deck, but we do have Brom getting buffed up kind of recently, you know, turned into an 06 now instead of an 05. Um, but besides that, you know, kind of just the old old standard, you know, like we're going to be looking for the Scar Grounds. Uh, so whenever our allies survive damage, they get tough and plus one plus zero. And, uh, you know, kind of going with that and just basically being like a kind of a control deck that can just put out really good blockers, make it make combat really difficult on the opponent um, and then finish up with some uh, big scary things at the top end with Scar Mother, Verena, Basilisk, Bloodseeker and even Vladimir. So let's go and get to it. Uh, probably nothing new here, but it's a classic deck and it's a lot of fun to play. So here we go, Vladimir Brom. Okay, we have a couple of new players here in the chat. So I'm going to be explaining uh, the game uh, and what's going on here for the newer players. So, um, you know, if you're wondering why I'm saying some <laughs> elementary things, that's what, that's what we're going to be doing here. All right, so with the mulligan system... Um, and, and said to come from magic, so kind of comparing it to magic. So in magic, you know, you have your seven cards. If you don't like them, you send them back. You send everything back. With this, you, you can send back however many you want. So, you, so that really helps you curve out, you know, okay, we want our two drop, we want our four drop, you know, like that kind of thing. You can say, all right, I'm going to send whatever cards back to make sure you have a pretty good hand. You also get to know what your opponent's playing. You get to know your region, so basically like the colors that your opponent's playing and their champions. You kind of know what type of deck. So we can kind of, all right, so they're going to be a Teemo Swain deck. We're gonna send the sentry back, but I like I like my champion, my two drop, and I like this combat spell. It's like one of my best combat spells. We're gonna keep all those. Um, so you, you know, so it's best it's a best of one game. Um, but that's a, a really good thing about best of one is that you get to know what your opponent's playing before you mulligan. So it's not like like in Magic when you play best of one, you know you could be playing against blue white control or you could be playing against mono red. And the cards you need to keep against blue white control and against mono red are completely different. And so, you know, you keep a good hand against Mono Red and then they're blue eye control and you and you just lose. And so, like, that kind of stuff doesn't happen here. So you get to know what they're doing first. All right. And then uh, this is our mana over here. So you can only play two regions. So, like, you know, with Magic, you can play however many colors you want. You can only play two regions. But uh, it it's... Um, so you can't just play, like, everything. But then, like, the mana is the same. So it doesn't matter whether you have, like... You know, like, you know, a blue card and a red card, you know, you need an island or a mountain with this, like a blue card or a red card. I guess I have all blue cards in hand, but a blue card or a red card, you can use whatever mana the same. Either way. Um, okay, so you have, like, one mana each round. So, you know, like, went round one, round two, round three, round four. This is round four. Um, another really great part about this game is that... Um, both players, like, the rounds are shared. You know, like, I play my 4-drop, they play their 4-drop. Right, like, the rounds are shared like that. That's just such a good thing about this game. And that, that makes it so you can't just, like, have one person, you know, whoever's on the play, they have their turn 1 Goblin Guide, and they're already ahead, you know, really far ahead, and things like that. And then the other person can't catch up. Because, you know, you play your turn one Goblin Guide, they can also play their turn one Goblin Guide. And block. Everything has Vigilance, everything has Haste. Everything, you attack in Columns, and so you, there's no double blocking, you can only, like, single block um, everything. But then, but nothing heals. So, like, this 3-2 took, this 3-3 three, three took one damage, and so now it's a 3-2. It doesn't heal at the end of the round. And so, like, that's how, even though it's just single blocking, you can kill larger things instead of double blocking. They just take damage over time. But then if you use a pump spell and give it, you know, you know, use a pump spell to give it, like, plus one health, it will heal it back to three, and then, like, the next round will stay at three. So pump spells can kind of act as healing on damaged units. <laughs> Magic. Magic has double blocking. Magic, whenever you attack with a unit, you can block with, like, 50, you know, however many things you have can all block. There's This game also, it stops at 6. You can only have 6 across. And damage always happens left to right. 
not damage doesn't just happen at the same time it happens left to right which does have different effects on your life total and on different allies and stuff yeah and you, there are cards that are, can heal allies there are healing cards in the game I came to fight. Man, this thing's huge. 5-8. So even though the rounds are shared, just the, the attack token goes back and forth. So like this is their turn to attack. Next next it's they call them rounds that turns here. So this is their round to attack. Next round will be our round to attack. The team level attack, it's elusive. Basically, elusives are like flyers. So like it's a it's a little flyer. I can't block it. So that will attack. All right, their team mode leveled up. Yep, definitely. Yep, there's aggro, there's control, there's mid range. Absolutely, um, they do a really good job of balancing the game and making it so. There's ten regions, like in Magic. There's five colors. There's ten regions in this game, and you can play any region um, at all, <laughs> and like you, you can definitely be uh, successful with all the regions. They do a good job balancing the game. With Magic, whenever they print a card that's way too powerful, they you know gets banned. And then you just don't get to play it anymore. With this game, when they print a card that's too powerful, then they um, then they uh, adjust it. Um, they you can you can buff buff cards, nerf cards. They they change the cards. And uh, man, I kind of want to kind of keep Troll Chant available. Maybe we just open attack. Maybe we just open attack. Eat this. All right. Anywho, so the cards can get adjusted, and um, and so that's really cool because it's just a digital card game. Like with Magic, since it's paper, you can't you know adjust a, a paper card. Puts those back both down to being three ones. That's fine. So the so no, this game's not on paper because there there's a lot of aspects of it which are would be on, online only. Like, they wouldn't really work in paper. For example, my opponent here has been giving me puff caps, which are, like, little card, like, little, like, little things on the cards on my deck that deal damage. Like, if I draw a puff cap, I take, I take one point of damage for each puff cap I draw. And they're just randomly on my 31 cards. And so you couldn't really do that in paper, right? Like, in paper, you couldn't just say, all right, well, these, you know, little tokens are on, you know, random cards on your deck. That wouldn't really work. But it, but it can work on... You know, online, just fine. Nothing escapes my watch. Yep, you start with twenty, just like a Magic. Both players start twenty life. This is our, our life total over here. Um, unlike Magic, you can't heal above twenty because they they want the games to kind of you know they don't want the games to go forever. So like in Magic, you can you know heal to and be like seven hundred if you're playing like a Soul Sisters type deck. You know, you can have however much life. In this game, you can you know twenty is the most you can go. And it's the same thing that, like, if you, you know, you can mill people out, just like in Magic, you know, like, if you if you are, need to draw a card and you don't have any cards left, you lose the game. Or also the 20 life. Alright, so another really cool thing about this game, which I never really got to, is spell mana. So you can see here, I have 7 regular mana and then 2 spell mana. They have 7 regular mana and 3 spell mana. What the spell mana thing is, is to keep the game like competitive if you don't curve out and use your mana the, um, every single round. So, it, you know, like we both start with one mana round one. If you don't play a one drop, like I don't think I played a one drop here, then your once one mana gets saved as spell mana for later on. And so like this, this mana can only be used as spells, but you can, you know, bank your mana. And so that helps control decks. So like it's not just always just aggro decks curving out one, two, three, four, and then, you know, running people over. Because then, like, a control deck cannot play anything on one, not play anything on two, and that's three mana they saved. And so round three, they can have six total mana, and they can play a six mana spell. You can play a six mana spell on round three. Uh, block, block, block. So that's a really cool aspect of the game that allows mid-range and control decks to keep up with aggro decks, even if they you know, take a, a round off because they don't have, you know, like a round one play, for example. 
But because of that, what what that also means is that your spells are your spells cost more in general as compared to magic, um, because you have the extra ability to have spell mana. So therefore, spells are just kind of more expensive in general. And this game also really prioritizes. Um, I'm gonna get the scar grounds in play. It prioritizes units and combat more so than magic. Magic, you know, really prioritize. You know, like the spells are incredibly powerful in magic. You know, like four mana wrath of god, one mana lightning bolt. Like the spells, you know, two mana terror. Like removal. The removal spells kind of dominate magic, and that's not really the case here. This game is built more on the units and the champions and the stuff in play. So attacking and blocking, for the most part, you know, there's obviously uh, not everything. Like, there are control decks and stuff like that still, but um, that's what kind of shapes the meta, is attacking and blocking. Card pool has... So there's 10 regions. I would guess each region has around... I don't know... 150, 200 cards each region. Maybe, you know, so just if guessing, maybe 200 cards per region. That seems kind of high, but that'd be 2,000 cards. That seems kind of high. They really do a good job of making, trying to make basically every card playable um, in some form or fashion. And so you're not going to have, like with Magic, you know, there's only... You know, even though the card pool is vast in Magic, there's only a handful of cards that are actually, like, constructed playable. Because a lot of them are just made for draft and stuff like that that aren't very good. And that's not the case with um, with this game. They really make all sorts of stuff competitive. Alright, let's go Avalanche. Yeah, so the champions are like your mythics. They're the best cards. And so you, you're actually limited to how many champions you can put in a deck. They're 40 card decks because there are no lands. So instead of a, you know, so it's kind of like a 60 card deck with lands. But 40 card decks with no lands. And since there's 40 cards, there you can actually only have three of each card in a deck instead of four. Because uh, there's less total cards. That's acceptable. Is that level up there, Swain? No. There's this eye right here. I guess that's um, that will show you what's going to happen in combat, also, so you can you know so you don't always have to do all the combat math yourself. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of nice. Uh, it'll show you exactly what's going to happen whenever. Whenever a spell is cast or, or anything like that. What's up, AJ buddy? The cargo. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and entomb that. And just keep that out of the way. Good game. That's the GG emo. Alright, 1 and 0. Oh. Picked up a win. Braum really dominated that game. Braum's really cool. Ooh, we're playing against a deck that's going real big. We're playing against some ramp. Going big. So we're definitely sending Troll Chan and Whisper Words back, and I uh I guess we send Sentry back also. Sentry, like, you know, Sentry's just not the best two drop to play after Blood Letter, because it just dies immediately. Alright, so now we can curve out one, two, three. Got a good curve out here. Alright, we got the attack token round one. Send him in. I'm down to 14. Man, they have some really good ramp. Everyone bleeds for the right prize. 
They ramping hard. Wow, they have nine mana already. It's around four. I have four mana. <laughs> All right, they ramp again. Okay, so they got eleven mana. I dress for the occasion. Rude. Stun by Vladimir. I guess we use a transfusion. Strength Which will just make a new curator, kill their O3. So if I play Avalanche, we kill our own Ruthless Raider. We also kill their faces of the old ones. I don't know. Let's get this thing in play. But we level up Vladimir. Okay. So we block there because that thing would die anyway. I guess it makes my Vladimir attack a whole lot worse, though, doesn't it? Because then all these things have one health. Alright, so I feel bad for blocking. I really wish I didn't block right now. I wish I would just take... I wish I'd be at 7 with the 3-1 in play. How am I dealing with this Trindamir? The Trindamir is the problem. Not the best you got. You'll need more than that. I don't think I played this game very well, but they also had a great hand. I don't like any decision I have. And all the roads, like we have a lot of different options with three sisters. We have, you know, my transfusion. We have a lot of options, but all of the options are poor for me. Especially because they are um, Ionia Frel Yord, they could, you know, if I go any kind of pump spell, they can easily frostbite, they can easily stun, uh, do those kind of things that we have seen. Rid of, gets rid of that thing and gets rid of an 8 mana card for the Trundle. I mean, if they have a Field of Rush, yeah, they do. Alright. Really great hand. That was a great ramp hand. Good game, opponent. They got us. Uh, Ori Shark asks, who's the next uh, Path of Champions run going to be with? I don't know. So, we're, like, we're in the Pike run right now. We got, I think, two more to go with Pike. I think. Maybe three. I think just two. Yeah, we defeated Zed last time. So I think we just have Nautilus and Victor left with Pike. Oh man, Siobhan is always really tough. Dragons. 
Braum, not so great against dragons, because they do get large enough to kill Braum. So the troll chant is going to be necessary. And because not only do they get large enough, but then like the fight spells. Right? Like that's the problem, is the fight spells. So these are a couple of games in a row that are. Not great matchups for Thrall. Okay, so I'm gonna save the two spell mana for saving the mana for Troll Chance and get the Scar Grounds in play first. Yeah, after Pike, I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't have a, a big time plan. I do kind of want to do. We, we, uh, we mentioned it a little bit. One of the last streams that sounds pretty fun is maybe doing like a speed run with somebody. Once, once we level up a character all the way to like level twenty-two, try like a speed run throughout the entire thing, like all the way from Lulu to Victor. You know, speed run the whole thing. That could be a, a cool stream one day. Glad, what's up, Glad? Glad says I came back. After a big break, almost like a year, I have around 30,000 shards, 10 champ cards, and other bunch of wild cards. Any ideas which deck to craft? I want something ultra fun. Okay. Oh, this is not what I was expecting. Do I... Huh. Okay, that still kills that. The thing about this game is you can kind of craft anything. Um, there are a lot of puff cap decks right now. Um, they've added a lot of new puff cap stuff with the new region with Bandal City. So you can have like Caitlyn Teemo decks. Swain Teemo is really popular. How can Brom help? Uh, the player base isn't too big, honestly. It's it's not. It's it's much smaller than Magic and Hearthstone that have been around, you know, a decade, two decades more. Um, I feel this be friends. But they they do have, you know, plans for the game and hope to, you know, hopefully they'll continue to grow it. But right now, the player base is pretty small. Uh, I don't know. What does two Scar Grounds do? Probably something cool. The winter's claw strikes. Fire and fury burn me. Time for talk. Show me your best. Man, Siobhan is so difficult to deal with. Maybe I should be casting Ice Shard right here. I shard would give Braum plus two plus zero. Almost killed Giovanna. The enemies of day will fall. Braum pretty big. <laughs> it's kind of a poor draw. Like we really just need spells right now. We really don't need any of these units. Really just need spells. I like, all they need is, like, another Concerted Strike and stuff, and this is going to be a difficult one to win. Okay. No Concerted Strike there. Sun and steel. 
Not sure if that ice shard was worth it. See the Demostian border from here. There's only one true light. Yeah, it dealt a good amount of damage to the Shivana as well as killed the two one that was doing damage to the Brom. Yeah, maybe it wasn't worth it. Okay, yeah, Vladimir's leveled up. That's good. Shining gifts from the sky. Radiant strikes. Forge ahead. I think we need more Death Lotuses and Ice Shards. I can see that. But like basically, like this Avrosen Sentry could be a Death Lotus or Ice Shard. Not doing a very good job of like killing Shivana, but if they use like combat spells to like save any of this stuff, hopefully that helps out my Brom. Like I don't care about any of these things. Yep. Now I take to the sky. We did find some scar grounds. Everyone bleeds for the right prize. Kneel before me. Yeah, champions can die. Yep. Absolutely, they're just regular cards. They're just like uh, slightly more powerful than normal cards, kind of like mythics. But no, they're regular cards. They can die for sure. Uh, Tarkaz before attacking, or simply attack? If I attack here... I came to fight. I'll play the Tarkaz first, but that could definitely backfire. I don't... I don't think we're really gonna win this, but... Her light is our sword, her walk, yep. our armor. Backfiring. Where can I find a full body? So six cards, we know at least two of them are dragons from their draw two dragon card. You cannot sway me. Would have been really nice to have like a whisper words in this game. And be able to help refill our hand. Like they they've just been drawn more cards than us. Do they need our help? Because while this attack right now looks really good for us, I assume that they have yeah, we, we can assume that they have uh, combat tricks, and I don't have any. Yeah, like that. They're pretty close to being dead. Yes, whisper words. Just a draw two. Unyielding light. Okay, so the Vladimir. And that's another really cool thing about champions is like you know we have you could you know just like like le like a leg I guess instead of mythics, it's real more, real, they're really more like legendary creatures. You can only have one of them in play with the same name, and so whenever you draw the second one. Instead of it just being useless in your hand, it turns into each champion as a champion spell. So it turns into a spell so you can still play it. And then if you play the champion spell, you create another copy of it back into your deck. Alright, another Crimson Disciple. 
So that's their third sharp sight. Maybe I should have just blocked with the Vladimir. Stop. Oh, this hurts. Okay, never mind. It worked out perfectly. We still have Vladimir alive. All right, I think we may actually have this. Ooh. Okay. So we'll do that after combat. Like, so basically, if they survive this somehow, then we have Crimson Disciple plus Basilisk Bloodseeker to do four damage to them. All right. Still winnable. Two and one. That's a really good win. All right, Sivir Akshan. Another deck that's trying to do lots of attacking. I think I want to keep Tarkaz, honestly. Like Tarkaz, Troll Chance. Like Tarkaz is a great blocker, a 5-8. Eight. Eight's a lot of health. Yeah, learn Sentry can probably be something else, though. I guess it did, you know, Trade with a Pale Cascade, it drew a card. So it's kind of doing its thing. Um, I would rather play this right here. Like, I'd rather play Sentry here because of the 3 1. And, like, against action, you know, like, it's. Neither of them block action, neither Sentry nor Raider, but if they had 2 mana 3 1, we'd rather have. Cause like if I troll chant block, they have double plus two plus one or the plus two plus one in a sharp sight. You know they just need two pump spells. Kind of like using troll chant after like on I like like troll chant on a three three. Name. Even just a sharp sight, it's not like we we just block and stay alive. We don't even kill them. So yeah, they're leveling up action super fast. Honor is the rest on a dull blade. And this is a perfect hand for their deck. Both their champions immediately and pump spells. Like that's all you need. That's a perfect hand. No Braum for us, unfortunately. So, many so the Fleet Feather Tracker will probably challenge my 5-8. But at least it'll be a 5-8. It'll get in the way. Those two champions are great. I wonder what this deck's like when you don't have your champions, especially when you don't have action on round two. It's, a living. it's probably not too good. This is 
All right, looking really bad. Looking really, really bad. Make it worth my while. I'm a woman of principle. Mine is fair and get paid. So we need more spells that deal damage and less. Their third action. Right, I guess they're just gonna have all their champions. Okay, so Whisper Words isn't close to having reputation turned on. Quick hands make quick work. The Winter's Claw strikes. I guess they have like a, a rally, I guess. Well, that was a frustrating game. What are you going to do? They played four champions and a whole bunch of spells, and I played one champion, Vladimir, who died right away to a removal spell. All right, on to Tristana, Teemo, Poppy. So I like the Avros and Sentry that can, you know, block and trade... And draw a card. And I'm going to keep the Whisper Words that can also draw. Because I feel like we're going to be, both players are going to be trading a bunch. And like they're going to have a lot more card advantage than us. So I kind of feel like I want this Whisper Words. But maybe keeping the Whisper Words is a mistake. We shall see. Alright, definitely feels like we don't really need this whisper words right now. Can see the Demostian border from here. Yeah, probably atrocity. For Shadow Isles. It's kind of the only thing to play in Shadow Isles. Loud and loud. Ready the torches! Look out for reavers! Vandal Commando is pretty good. And again, we have all just all units, so yeah, we need we need some spells in here. A couple more. Like our avalanches have been good, we only have two. Alright, so those two ones need to be some more spells. Playing Vladimir gives us the Vladimir Champion spell. Man, it's crazy. Just killing anything just gives them more units. Might as well not give them space for more units. Yeah, there's, there's really no reason. We're bad at finding scar grounds. Well, we're good. We're good, like in one game, right? Like we had three scar grounds in one game. We're bad at spreading out the scar grounds. Yeah, and that's why. Hey, T.O. Scoob, what's up? My done new saltwater scourge with misfortune. I haven't, I have not. You know, they have, they have the, uh, you know, the the path of champions with misfortune. I have 
Wait, is Misfortune possible? No. So Saltwater Scourge isn't available anymore, right? Or is it still? I think it's all replaced with Path of Champions, I believe. This one's mine. This does not look like it's going to end well for us. One suffers and before me. Man, Braum was one away from leveling up also. It was at 9 out of 10. I Looks like we're just going to die to Atrocity. I don't think I can do anything about it. We can try to attack and drain. But again, they just kill us with Atrocity. I guess we'll just attack and drain. I don't know why am I even attacking with this blood letter. Yeah, we've only drawn units the whole time. Yeah, we need we need we need more spells. This deck needs more spells. Definitely. That's what we have learned. Spells good. Okay. So you're struggling with misfortune. You dropped something. I dropped everything. Man, my draw two, like my only spell <laughs> that I kept. Reporting it. Right, I'll take a look at it after this game. See if I can figure anything out to help you out. You best believe I don't play. I have the play. I need the reputation. Mm, such rich blood. Yeah, might might push some damage, but didn't kill them. Didn't matter. Our deck wasn't necessarily bad, but we really lacked interaction. Uh, with our opponent. So, you know, like, looking at our deck, you know, there's only 14 spells in here. Two of them are Whisper Words. Those don't really count as interactions. You know, you're only looking at 12 total, and we really just needed interaction all the time, and we just didn't have it. Um, so that's that's going to be, like, number one of, like, what, what I want to change about the deck. Uh, so if we're looking at stuff to take out, yeah, we can take out those sentries. Um, even the Might, you know, like, this Might is kind of just not you know it doesn't help us win games that we wouldn't really win otherwise i think so i i'm perfectly fine taking getting that mine out of here also that's kind of a game that's kind of like a card of like whenever things are going right for you um but yeah we need to be able to damage our own units more i definitely want another ice shard and another avalanche really like both of those and then death lotus is an option i don't love death lotus but just kind of like seeing um how this kind of plays out and stuff i could definitely see playing another playing a Death Lotus. Um, but I kind of wouldn't mind maybe like Blighted Ravine instead or otherwise just like more uh, removal type spells like Bloody Business, Whirling Death, that kind of stuff. Kind of wouldn't mind any of those kind of things also. But I definitely like Ice Shard and Avalanche the most. I'd say prob probably a Death Lotus. I think pro that's probably the best option for this other one. So there we go. Get three more spells in here. Three more of those kind of cards that I think that could really help. Um, so an Ice Shard, an Avalanche, and a Death Lotus. So that still just leaves us at 16 spells, but I think that's looking a lot better. That's looking, you know, healthier. So there we go. So that that's going to uh, help out there. 
right. Uh, Scorched Earth is also an option. You know, that would be over, like, three sisters, basically, if you want. I don't love Scorched Earth, to be honest, because if you don't have, like, Ice Shard or Avalanche, there's a good chance the Scorched Earth really doesn't do anything or, or do what you want it to, right? Like, you're really relying on drawing Ice Shard or Avalanche for the Scorched Earth, so I, I just kind of passed on it, I think. All right, so those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and feel free to leave some comments if you've been playing a bunch of Vladimir or Braum yourself. Um, you know, what do you think about these changes? Uh, or if you know if you got other ideas or other things that you know if you've been playing it a bunch yourself that you want to help out um, everybody else here uh, over on YouTube, you know, leave some comments and and help everybody else out. But uh, I think our deck looked looked pretty solid, but it was just kind of a few cards uh, incorrect, right? Like we we just um, needed that little extra removal and then some of those losses could have definitely been wins all right but that's going to be it for vladimir brahm so as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you for the next video